Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is in fact time to take a look at another champion build video. We're going to be playing what I would consider quite overpowered currently, although a lot of people might disagree, but I'm going to show you why it is. We're playing support Zyra today. Now, I know she was pretty popular in Season 3, and then after a few nerfs to her, they kind of moved her numbers to scale better into mid lane, but we're actually going to abuse what we call supporting, and we're going to go ahead and call this support carrying, because it's a real thing. Anyways, we're going to start off early in this game by getting to a little bit of a fight with the Jinx. Uh, good pickup there by Ezreal. Plant got down, hit him a little bit, you know, damage, fun. Anyways, no, one main thing I want to get into first, but we're going to get into another little fight. We're going to lock down Blitzcrank. A little bit of damage. Unfortunately, Blitz praises that really well to get the hook, and Ez will fall, but he doesn't play the next part very smart. Um, his barrier is down. I'm just going to move in. That plant's going to hit him. I'm going to just get safe. I'm going to actually go for the Flash Ignite quick before he runs away. I just wanted to hear that kill because I knew my ADC would also pick up an assist on it. So that's kind of what we worked out there um, before the timer would run out or anything weird. So we'll pick up a kill as well on ourselves, and we're going to go ahead and keep building. But what we're going to do today in the Syrah build is we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about everything. We're going to talk about her abilities. We're going to talk about runes, masteries, items, and some strategy behind how support Zyra works. But the first thing we want to do is talk about these abilities so we know what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and start off with her passive, which is probably the worst part of her kit as a support, but it's okay because it can work out sometimes. Just don't rely on it. It is the Rise of the Thorns. Now what happens here after you die, you have two seconds to basically shoot a true damage dart um, in a direction. Um, takes a little bit of practice to hit this perfectly. Once you get good with it, you can actually pick up a lot of kills or at least lay down a lot of damage after you're dead to hopefully then let your ADC pick up a kill. So it's okay, but it takes a little bit of work. Here, we do know he is ganking. I have warded Tribush. We can see Xin Zhao. Um, Ezreal poked in the face. So here he's still going to come in. We're going to lock him down, though. It does hit the root as he slides across. We're actually going to be having that plant deal damage and slowing him. Um, unfortunately, I go back because I thought we were going to disengage. He does get raked back in, but I will show back up to deal damage. Unfortunately, Ezreal dies, but we'll continue to lock down Blitzcrank. We're going to go ahead and get him low. Jinx tries to come back up to help, but I still have damage. Going to throw another little plant, deal a little bit of damage. I'm going to just auto attack one more time, pick up the kill. Once again, Blitz comes back into something I don't know about. I'm just going to standard attack him one more time after locking him down. So there's a lot of pausing and stopping in this game to see plays because there's a lot Zyra can do and there's a lot of kills in this game. So next, let's just go ahead and talk about what you put in at level one. What we do there is we put a point into our E ability, which are our grasping roots. Now what happens there is you send your vines forward. Anything it hits, it's going to lock it down. And uh, yeah, pretty awesome. If you cast it with your E ability, or sorry, your W ability, Rampant Growth, those are your little seeds. Now your seeds, you can have two of them holding onto them at any time. I think you have a maximum of four down um, on the map. They take a certain amount of time to cool down. Um, it does grant you passive uh, cooldown reduction, which is kind of cool, but we don't have to worry about that early. We only put one point into this early, um, but we don't worry about it until later on. Here we're going to get to another little fight. We're going to basically drop everything we have because we deal damage, and we'll get to that in a second, but don't worry, we'll cover everything. Um, and we're gonna get to a little bit more of a fight. I'm gonna take that one turret shot so Ezreal can pick up the kill. Actually barriers, but the turret decides, you know, you're not in range, so it doesn't matter. So we get out safely there after picking up another couple kills. But uh, typically with Zyra, don't try to fight till you at least have two levels because you, I don't think you need it, need it, but you, you really need rampant growth for your plants to sit there and deal that extra damage. It's very helpful. Um, so yeah, your grasping roots was, was your E ability. Um, it's gonna, you know, hold them down basically all we need. It's going to also reduce their movement speed um, if those plants are attacking. Now at level 3 we put a point into our Q ability which is your Deadly Bloom. Now Deadly Bloom, um, if you have a butt on the ground, it's going to shoot. Um, those plants will shoot with Deadly Bloom, but if not, it's just going to basically do that little poke up from the ground. It's going to deal magic damage, everything on her kit does. And um, if cast on C, Deadly Bloom throws this Thorn Spitter plant, which fires at enemies and will last up to 10 seconds. Get into a bit of a fight. Nocturne is going to pick up a double kill. Um, kind of just want him to get those kills, actually. He needs them. He has nothing so far. He was 0, 0, and 0 as a jungler, so his ganks were obviously being terrible. And he needs some gold to get going. And I already have 5 kills, so it's okay. He can get that. Anyways, we're going to max out our E ability first, and then our Q ability, and then finally we're going to max out those plants last. And then there's our ultimate at level 6. That's your Strangle Thorns. You're going to drop down that big area if people are still standing on it when it goes off. They are going to get knocked up into the air. 
Um, plants in the area that you have from your previous casts will be in range, increasing their attack speed by 50%. They get a lot bigger, and it hurts. We're going to drop everything we can here because when you're getting focused to Zyra, here's another drawback to Zyra as a support or just as a champion in general, she is very squishy and she dies very fast. If you get caught out and you have somebody around you, actually scratch that. If you get caught out and it's someone you could potentially kill, potentially, like you kind of think you could, you could kill them, that means. Um, she does way more damage than you think she does, especially when you build her like this, which we'll get to next. Just drop everything. Your plants, your ultimate, your ignite, because we take ignite because we want to kill things. This is kind of a kill support lane. Everybody's been taking it anyways lately, but... You just drop it. We killed Blitzcrank in that last fight. You will murder through people. I always love catching out mids when I go cover mid as uh, support Zyra because they think they can take me because I'm a couple levels behind them. They cannot. It's a it's a very big no-no for them. We're going to go ahead and lock down both of them again. We're just going to basically let uh, Ezreal pick that up with the ultimate, so another little good engage. Um, another main thing we want to talk about with Zyra is uh, your job is to catch them out, and that is with those Grasping Roots. You want to get good at landing those. Um, you won't land them every time. It, it will happen. You know, it's got a little weird travel time on it. It takes a little bit to get used to. But if you lock somebody down, you're going to do really, really well. Here comes another example of just waiting things out and playing your opponent uh, and their weaknesses. So we lock him down, deal some damage to him. This is to get him away. Blitz moves in. He does grab me. Now, I'm going to peel away, drop my alt, so Ezreal can get away alive. Luckily, Ezreal sticks around. I can still drop plants and damage the Jinx alt off. We're going to actually lock down Blitz. Ezra's going to be able to pick up the kill on one of them. I'll pick up the kill with my plant on the other. We end up coming out ahead without losing anyone. So we killed all three of them. Um, and those two, I mean, I, drew, I did the ultimate there correctly to peel for not only myself, but I didn't think I was going to get away. I was going to bring them back away from Ezreal so Ezreal could get away. But turns out that with a couple more plants down, it slows them, does some extra damage. Ezreal can actually come back in and deal a little bit more extra damage to them, and we can actually both live through it. So um, I have plenty of AP to do this as well. So let's get to the build now. What we are doing is we are building that Frost Fang and what that builds into eventually, um, the Frost Queens, blah, blah, blah. Once again, here's another bad play by them. Jinx, if your tower's going to fall, why would you sit by it with two people who have been killing you? So you can't, you can't, don't stay by your tower if it's going to fall. Just run away. It's not worth giving your, their enemy team all that gold and then feeding a kill. Because then you're falling behind on farm, experience, and gold, and just everything. You're just just terrible play. Don't do that. Anyways, tangent aside, where were we? Items. We're building the Frost Queen's thing. We also do get, actually, penetration boots. You can do mobility if you want to as your support, so you can roam and go put those wards down a little bit quicker. You can also land that... Um, a grasping roots a little bit easier when you're running around that fast. So um, don't worry about that. I'm actually going to hit the Blitzcrank again with those roots. Um, I know it's max range really well. I play a lot of Zyra, actually. So it's not very tough for me. I'm not trying to brag. I just understand Zyra's kit. I play it a lot. So that is what we're doing there. Get good at your grasping roots. You catch out so many people and you pick up kills. Like, look, now Lysandra's locked down and now Ezreal thinks he can go for that kill, so Ezreal's gonna go in for this kill and they will pick this up. She actually has to alter herself to save. Ari's gonna pick up the kill. Everybody's gonna get out alive. So, what, just, just this knowing the kit is so helpful. Um, <laughs> we're gonna lock down him. He's gonna have to use his alt to get out. Ezreal will get away through the wall. Good blink. And, uh, now, unfortunately, Ari gets low, but I'm going to try to peel. Throwing down plants. Going to be dealing tons of damage. Actually, there we missed lockdown, so we throw down the ultimate. He will get shut down. Ari will live. I will flash to avoid that because I just don't want to be a part of that. I'm getting start starting to get low on that mana. We escape. It is all fun and dandy. Now, as for our first few items, what we do is early on, we do try to pick up the first part of our sight stone. Very helpful. The damage, um, not damage reduction, but the having health is helpful. There we are going to lock down Blitzcrank. And Ezreal picks that up after still sticking around. I do finally die um, because Xin Zhao, that gap close is pretty helpful for him. I'll have my vengeance, don't worry. But um, that's what we're going to go for first. And then we also do pick up the first part of the Leandries, which is the Haunting Guys. And that is very helpful too because it gives us more health because once again, we're really squishy. So we do need a little bit of health to help just, you know, be able to live. And then we have our boots. So this is kind of our early game right here. We have plenty of health, very helpful. Pick up a kill randomly there, but that's fine. And then we're getting lots of gold because you pick up tons of gold from uh, Frost Queen because of every time you hit somebody up with a single charge, it actually counts for double the gold. So when we hit multiple people with our grasping roots, we're getting a lot of gold. So we make a lot of gold with this item. We can finish out our build really quick. Obviously, it does help having 10 kills, 
But Zyra's going to get kills. Like, just deal with it, ADCs. We'll carry you early and you can carry us late. Although we don't even need that because we're still fine. Anyways, we're going to keep building, though. Um, at this point in the items, it does start to get actually a little bit situational depending on how the team is going. Now, I've played a few games where my mid laner is doing so terribly and they're so far behind in items, I start to rush a little bit more damage because we basically don't have any AP damage. So if you need to rush more damage, that's fine. Now, if you want to rush more utility, here's a perfect example of their mid laner thinking they could take a support when they cannot. And I only have 165 AP. It's not like I'm super, super fed. I mean, she's got more damage than that, but you have to be... Conscious that Zyra support will deal damage if she builds this much AP. Um, your main goals as Zyra are to lock down the people who get caught and for epic disengage. Now, if they have a team that come, like if you're looking at the enemy team comp and you're like, wow, that's hard initiations. They're coming at us with everything. They have Acceleration Gate from Jason Top. They got a Syndra, or not Syndra, sorry, a uh, Shivana who can dive in in dragon form. If they just have anybody who runs through the front line and just comes in hard, she is perfect champion for disengagement. You just throw your ultimate either on them or in between where their team is at, and it just cuts them in half because half the line's gonna get through it, which means they'll get cut off by your team. You can focus hopefully those couple who get through, and then the other three will get, you know, backed up into the air, and they won't be able to get away. Or, or they won't be able to get in to engage. They get split in half. So Zyra does a really good job with this. Also, she scouts really well with her plants and those blooms. Here they're going to chase a little bit too far. Ezreal does show up. is going to have to rethink this, so he starts throwing away. He is going to live, apparently. But here comes the Lissandra, uh, and she's going to come in, but she's just going to get burst. We're going to drop everything, which is super unnecessary. She exploded. So there they, uh, they overcommit once our team regroups. So careful with that. They didn't really have vision over there at all, although vision on the map right now is pretty terrible. Um, we have a few wards. They apparently, I don't know if they do, I have it turned off. But, um, yeah, you're awesome for engagements. But like I was saying, if you don't need to rush all of that damage, there's a few different directions you can go. Now, the one I'm going is I'm going to actually pick up the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Once again, giving us more health, allowing us to survive a tiny bit more. We're not trying to survive and be tanky, but we're just trying to live so we can use our abilities to disengage and engage for the team. But what this also does is it's going to slow everybody, which will break up their hard engage even faster if they have it. Um, their team honestly doesn't have a ton of super, super hard engage. It has some. And in theory, Olaf can run through all of it. But he's going to take a lot of damage while doing that because I have damage to support it. So we don't have to worry about that there. Um, what do we want to talk about? There's so much. It's so amazing. She's such a good, undervalued champion. Um, if it makes you feel any better, if you watch any of the LCS or the Masters, the Koreans are playing her again. And actually, she's come back a couple times in the LCS lately too. Um, I think, yeah, she's just as squishy is the main thing. And, but her disengage and the ability to catch people is just fantastic and undervalued. And she can carry. So if you play support and you're tired of people being bad, carry. Look at all the damage my plants do. Ezreal picks up the kill easy. Look how simple that is. We can get into another fight. We can lock more people down. We can throw down the ultimate. There's a bloom. We're going to pick up a kill. And uh, since she's going to move in, we're just going to throw some more down on top of her. She's going to take a lot of damage. Ezreal picks up the kill. Now Olaf has to reconsider how he wants to fight this. Ezreal's a little bit close. But we're going to go ahead and just help him pick that up. He will fall, unfortunately, but we can still push. Everybody else is dead. Nocturne just apparently doesn't want to alt in, whatever. Um, here comes Xin Zhao. Now, he's going to get into the 1v1. I'm going to drop the ultimate on myself. He gets knocked up. He unfortunately has some ticking damage. I will kill him, but so will he with his ticks if he didn't have that item. Probably would have just won. And here I think I shoot for some minions. Hooray. But Nocturne is going to take top, I guess. That's good. But... Back to the build itself, we are buying just, you know, more disengage for the team or engage with that uh, Rhylize. Now, if we didn't want to get that right away and we wanted to actually support ourselves with damage, luckily our Ari is doing fine, we would just rush the death cap, which at this point in the game we're starting to build towards. Um, we do have that needlessly large rod, so that's what we're going towards next. Now, let's talk a little bit about those runes and masteries. Now, masteries are a little bit different. I do a 10, 0, and 20 page. I call this a support caster page, and this amplifies our damage as a supporting caster who will be building damage. You can see this page, I think, on my Facebook page. If not, there is a link in the description which will take you to my masteries videos for all season four masteries. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Super fun stuff. Here we're going to get into a weird fight, but we're going to keep locking people down. Unfortunately, I think we're just going to die out from it, but it's going to happen. Um, Nocturne is just addicted to the top lane. This is one of those junglers who doesn't understand how helping a team works, but whatever. We're at least in a commanding lead this game, so we don't have to worry about it as much. Now, 
about those runes. What I do for those is we take um, hybrid penetration marks, armor seals, AP per level scaling glyphs, and then I think I take AP quintessences. Now there's a lot of AP there, but what happens is when you hit that level two in lane, you have so much damage. N no AD carry or other support is typically used to that much magic damage. Everybody has armor runes or armor seals in their runes. So they're, they're not prepared for it. So you do bring a lot of damage, which is why I pick up a lot of early kills. Now you might be saying, well, wouldn't it be helpful if your support has them? If he's picking up assists from it, the exchange on that is actually really good. If you look at the score now, we're both super fed. The two of us combined have more kills than the enemy team. If I get ahead early, it allows me to get them ahead later. Um, either or, vice versa still works that way. If they get the kills and I get assists, it's going to help out both directions. So as long as you're both picking up gold from those exchanges, you're going to be doing just fine. Um, that pretty much is the build though for uh, Zyra. Finally, after that, we're full build right now. If you didn't want to pick up that Rylize, you could have a Void Staff and just do more damage. You can sell the Frost Queen late and pick up a Zonia's Hourglass um, for some stasis and some armor. You could also pick up a Locket. Not a bad plan. And another one is a Crucible if you want to have non-stop mana, although we have mana regen currently with the Frost Queen, so we don't have to worry about that there either. So, uh, yeah. That's Zyra, secretly overpowered, I kid you not. Um, takes just a little bit of time to get used to her and when to drop that alt and when to peel and when to catch. But once you do that, you catch people so easily and create 4v5 situations all the time, you're going to win games. If that's the build for Zyra, leave me comments down below, a like and subscribe. But other than that, I'll just see all of you guys later. We're going to get hooked by Thresh, but like I have damage. I'm not afraid to use it. We're going to pick up our one kill there. Um, we're going to get very, very low. We will pick up one more kill on Varus, and then now we have to get this minion out of our way because we want to stun Anivia, which we will, and we'll use one more Q, pick up the triple kill um, right as we die to Zhao, 